one that is more in the way of you. We ask, dear God, that you would go around the world and let your joy, let your peace reign on this earth. Help us from not killing our brothers and sisters. Let us love one another. And we ask, dear God, that you would touch this nation, that you would guide our leaders, that they may not be as the leaders in the day of Ezekiel. that they will seek you out, O oh God, and get your wisdom, your discernment, your the strength, and get courage from you. And bless the people, O oh God, that we may look at ourselves as individuals and as citizens of this mighty country and steal in us a clean heart that we may be about your business. Let us love one another. And we ask, dear God, that you would touch this church as we go upon our journey. We, like the children of Israel, have seen many trials and tribulations. And we ask, dear God, that you would lead us as you led the Israelites out of Egypt, that we will see your cloud, that we will see your fire, and that we will follow you that we will not make idols and that you would be our God and we your people. We ask dear God that you would bless our pastor today as he travels with his wife, keep them from harm and bring them back safely to this place. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our readings come from the Gospel of John and the prophet Ezekiel. Our Old Testament comes from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, 
dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to light, life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to, to, to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to, to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds of breath, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these, these slain, these, these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breathed in them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They are our bones. Are, they are, they say, I'm sorry, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We, we are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say, and bring and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from, from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land, then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. Our second scripture comes from John 11th chapter. Um, Now a man was sick. A man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and Martha, his, and his sister Martha. This man whose brother Lazarus, this Mary, I'm sorry, this Mary whose brother Lazarus now lay sick was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Mary, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, are there, are there not 12 hours of daylight, a man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when, it is when, it is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went to, to tell them, our friend Lazarus 
has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he's asleep, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So when he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for days. Beth Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at that last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house com comforting her, Notice how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have, would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, she replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, how, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave within a stone that across, it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his, his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothing and let, and, and let him go.
This is the good news about God for the people of God. We're going to um, skip the Gloria this morning. Um, I find it hard to, to come up with the words that, that I thought I was supposed to say because my heart is heavy. And it's heavy today, I, I, I say, because <clears throat> because today, you know, we have one deacon here today. And the way that transpired, you know, concerns me. And I think that it concerns me so much because it has a lot to do with what the sermon is about today. The title of the sermon is Ties that bind. And I have thought about using as a subtext shake, rattle, and roll. And that was because of the of the the bones. We start off here, I want to start with this Old Testament, you know, because it talks about what the Jews have been going through and how they have, some of the things that have caused problems in, in their um, lives, not just at this time, but throughout and how some of those problems cause problems in our lives. Ezekiel is talking to them, and Ezekiel is trying to make the Jewish nation understand that, that things are going to get better. At this particular time, they are in exile. You see, what had, as they say, what had happened was the Jews had sinned. And, and they refused to repent. And what were their sins? Their sins was about selfishness worshiping idols. The leaders rejected God's law and the will of the people. And so Jesus, I mean, so God decided that they were going to be punished. So he bought the Assyrians in and the Assyrians crushed them and beat them up and controlled them and, then, and, and, and they were responsible to the Assyrians and paying taxes. And still they did not learn. And by this time, you know, there was a new power that overcome the Assyrians called the Babylonians. And what happened at this point after two invasions, because the 
Jews didn't pay their taxes. And the Babylonians want to make them understand there was a punishment for that. So after invading Jerusalem, they ransacked and tore down the temple. The temple that the people were so, that it was, it was so important to them. Because for them, that's where God was. Because that's where the Ark of the Covenant was. And so they tore down the temple. They, 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 they took away all of the, the, the valuables, the gold, and etc. And then they took the people. And they made the people walk from Jerusalem to Babylonia. And somewhere I saw that that walk was a thousand miles. You know, and so there they were feeling being exiled feeling that had God forsaken them because God had allowed God's temple to be destroyed? Was God the Lord or the God of all gods? Had God lost God's power? Did God care for them? Their faith was shaken. Here they were in exile, thinking that they were going to be annihilated and be no more, just a, just a blurb in history. But what happened during that exile was that Ezekiel prophesied, prophesied that that there was these bones, and these bones were really the Jewish nation. And so it was about trying to get these bones and God prophesying through Ezekiel that these bones will live. They are dry, they are separated, they have no flesh but they will live again. And that also was that they were going to be able to come together and come back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem would be there again. And that there would be, continue to be a not just a temple, but a monarchy, a line from David. You know, David, God had taken David and made David king. And part of the, for the Jews, it was that there will continuously be a line from David to the one that is called the Messiah. And that Messiah would one day not just be be reign over the Jews, but reign over the world because they were God's chosen people. So there they are thinking that their faith, you know, stumbling and concerned about their faith. Then I want to talk about Lazarus. Lazarus died. And Jesus allowed him to die. Because he knew that he, could, he needed to use that so people would believe him. 
Believe that he is the son of God. Believe in God. And, 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 and they would turn to him and turn from their wicked ways. And so he got there eventually. And there they are in front of this tomb. Mary and Martha have said to him, you know, if you had gotten here, my brother wouldn't have died. Um, and Jesus asked them, you know, do, don't you believe in what I say? Don't you believe in me? Don't you believe in the resurrection? They said, yes, they do, you know. But I can imagine how they felt about not having their brother alive, that they felt that Jesus had abandoned them because he didn't come when they expected him. They had sent word. My brother, no, the one you love is sick. The one you love is sick. And what they're saying is, I know you're going to come now, not because so much he's my brother, but because it is the one you love. But he didn't come, but he was on time. And so he got there, and he went to this tomb, and he called Lazarus out of the tomb. And there Lazarus comes out of the tomb, all bandaged up, tied up with death cloth, you know, wrapped around his body. And the cloth on his face still. And then Jesus says, take off those binding, that binding cloth. You know, and I thought about those binding cloths in death. Sometimes we have binding cloths that tie us down and keep us in death and keep us from going forward. What are those ties that bind us I'll get there in a moment. <laughs> Old men don't 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 remember like they were when they were eighteen. But they remember. Or should I say they don't forget? The ties that bind the ties of pride. Pride that sometimes keep us from saying, I'm sorry. Some of the ties that bind us are ties of worry that keep us in confusion. And there are ties of selfishness that keeps us from loving our neighbor as ourselves. And there are ties that we have old tapes that tie us up because somebody said we weren't worthy. And I'm not just talking about being LGBT, but ties such as your daddy won't nothing, 
and you ain't going to be nothing. Your mama was like so and so and so, and she was like this. She was nothing, and you ain't going to be nothing. And we allow those ties to bind us. We've got to cut those ties. So what is it that I want to say real quickly about this, about us today? You know, we have had ties that, has, that have bound us here as a church. As long as we have been here, in each decade, somebody had thought we wouldn't make it further. There are people today who think that we're on our last leg. And I'm not talking about just about people who have been here and who have decided to, to go somewhere else. There are people who have never been to this church, and they say they don't think we're going to make it. But what I want to say to you is that just like the children of Israel who were in exile, God said that there would be a remnant, a small portion that would remain and that would grow and that would, would make the the, the, the Jewish nation, what it should be, she will be a place that will follow what God says and be obedient and repent from sin. You know, I started to come in this morning and say to you, good morning, saints, expecting you to say good morning. Then the Next thought was I was going to say was good morning sinners. And I, and I knew that that would, people would sort of go, who? Because we, we don't want to talk about sin. And we have been told that we are sinning, you know, about from a sexual nature so much that we don't want to talk about it. But, you know, it ain't, a, it ain't about that. The sins that we really commit are sins against each other, against God. Anytime that you put something before God, you've made it an idol. That's a sin. <coughs> when you've passed your brother and your sister and they needed help and you didn't help them, that's a sin. When you gossip and tell untruths about people or keep things stirred up, that's sinning. So, and, and we as a church and we as, a, as individuals must repent and move on. Don't keep the tie don't keep the binding on us. Let it go. And I will say to you today, what ties do you need to cut loose as an individual? What ties do we as a church need to cut loose so that we would be able to be in an obedient community of faith? I leave you with this. Think on these things. Amen.
for the stewardship team. As Pastor Carlton was saying, you know, we have those ties that bind us. One of those ties could be a financial tie. And what we need to do is to let go of that binding financial. I know for me it is. So I'm, I'm speaking from a me point right now. And so to do that, we need to trust that God is going to give us what we need. And in that trusting that God is going to give us what we need, we need to give back to God what he has given us. So at this time, as the ushers come forward, let us bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts. We ask that you bless these gifts as well as the givers. God, we ask that we be able to multiply and use them for your will and your good, not only inside these doors, but outside as well. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, as we gather once more around this table, I want to remind you that in metropolitan community churches, we affirm, celebrate, and offer an open communion. For when Jesus sat at the table and broke bread with those who he rejected and alienated by the society in which they live, Jesus proclaimed that God's care 